my year of breaking limits. Hallelujah. Congratulations. Our God is a good God. I'm too excited that God is gradually pushing you and pushing you closer to the new year 2021. If you are sure you will see that year, let your amen be the loudest. Let your amen swallow your neighbor's amen. Tell your neighbor, you will see next year. You will see 2021. And even beyond it, you will see it. Come on, give him a shout. I welcome you to this coming on service this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I trust God that somebody will be lighted again. Our prophetic declaration for the month of December is seasons of glory. Seasons of glory, which means that every form of shame around your life must be swallowed up this month. That amen is not convincing enough. So whatever is still not looking glorious or as glorious as it should be in your life now, before this month is over, it shall be swallowed up in the name of Jesus. And for every shame in any area, God is giving you double honor, double glory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. All through our Sunday services for the remaining part of this month, we are going to be teaching on the top topic, Empowered by the Holy Spirit for Triumphant Living. Empowered by the Holy Spirit for Triumphant Living. We are beginning that teaching this first service as I take part 1A. Empowered by the Holy Spirit for triumphant living. I like to begin to say, God's people, that by redemption, you are ordained to live a triumphant life. Not a struggling life. Not a life of defeat. Not a life of shame. No, not a life of reproach. But you are ordained to live a triumphant life. A victorious life. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14, 2 Corinthians 2, 14, it says, Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ, and make it manifest the savour of his knowledge by us in every place, who causes us to triumph always, always, all the time, in all the ways. So no matter what direction Satan comes in, God has ordained you and me to triumph over him. Yes, we know the world is wicked. Notwithstanding, God has already ordained us as overcomers. First John chapter 5 and verse 18 and 19. First John chapter 5 and verses 18 and 19. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one touched him not. And we know that we are of God. The whole world lies in wickedness that God has ordained us to consistently overcome the wickedness of the devil. We know. We know. Even though the world lies in wickedness, even though the devil is set to each time perpetrate his wickedness ministry, but we are God. We are overcomers. Can I hear you say I know? Ask your neighbor, do you know? But as for me, I know I'm an, I'm an overcomer. We are born an overcomer. No matter the height of wickedness of the devil. Praise the name of the Lord. In John chapter 16 and verse 33. John chapter 16 and verse 33. He said, these things have I spoken to you. That your joy may be full. John 16, 33. He says, but in this world, you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Hallelujah. Say to yourself, I'm ordained to live a triumphant life. Say it confidently. Say it authoritatively. 
Hallelujah. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 31, hear what the Bible says. Romans 8, 31. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Who can be against us? Go to verse 35. Verse 35. It says, Who shall separate us from the love of God? Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, perish, what? For it is written, for thy sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Verse 37. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. No matter what, we conquer. That's our status by redemption to live a triumphant life. To live a triumphant life. To live a triumphant life. Hallelujah. In Colossians chapter 2 and verse 15, Colossians 2 15, have won spoiled principalities and powers. He made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Whatever Jesus has done is extended to us. The same way Jesus triumphed against the, the devil, so also he has made us overcomers. Hallelujah. But our greatest guarantee for a triumphant life is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Because the wickedness of, the, of this world, the devil and his cohort, they will not respond to any other thing but power. Power. Power of the Holy Ghost. That's what they respond to. In Luke chapter 10 and verses 17 to 19. Luke chapter 10 and verses 17 to 19. And the 70 return again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I behead Satan as lightly fall from heaven. Why? Because I have given unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. And over all the powers of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. I've given you power. When you have power, you have authority and dominion. When you have power, everything submits cheaply to you. Praise the name of the Lord. Power. 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 The devil does not submit to any other thing but power. That's why you need the Holy Spirit. You cannot live a triumphant life without the Holy Spirit. Power in Psalm 66 and verses 2 to 3. Psalm 66 and verse 3. Psalm 66 and verse 3. Say unto God, How terrible art thou in thy works? Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves unto thee. When you carry the power, you don't struggle with the devil. They submit. Sickness submits. Failure submit. Hallelujah. Witches and wizards submit. They submit themselves. They submit themselves. A life of triumph, a triumph, a life of triumph is impossible without the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit. So I'd like to charge you this month. You must settle. You must, you must deepen your communion with the Holy Spirit. You must give the Holy Spirit a place in your life. Stop playing religion. Stop playing activity. You need the Holy Spirit. You only need the Holy Spirit in everything. He doesn't submit to phonetics. He doesn't submit to good name. He doesn't submit to your big Bible. He doesn't submit to your activity. Thank God for all those things. Oh, I'm in four units. It's good, but it's not good enough. It's the power of the Holy Spirit at work in you. Are you baptized in the Holy Ghost? That's why you can't pray effective prayer. Because you need the Holy Spirit to pray well, to pray right. You need the Holy Spirit to conquer the, the assault of the devil daily that is targeting to destroy people's destiny. 
that you slept and woke up today, you don't know all that transpires in your dream. Praise the name of the Lord. There are people that every day, they just wake up and be wake, waiting whether they will, they will see you wake up. And when they see you wake up and you pass, you are gorgeously and beautifully adorned and smiling, they are angry. But we thought he shouldn't have woken up. Praise the name of the Lord. You need the power of the Holy Spirit to live a triumphant life. You need the power of the Holy Spirit to live a triumphant life. Praise the name of the Lord. Without the help of the Holy Spirit, no, mat no matter a man's struggles and determination in life, Frustration is inevitable. Hallelujah. In Acts chapter 26 and verse 22, have on therefore obtained help of God. I continue until this day witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than those things which the prophet and Moses did say shall come. Have obtained help of God. The Holy Spirit is our helper. Without the helper, you live a life of hopelessness. Frustration is inevitable. Continuity of every good thing in life is by the power of the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit. In Psalm 127 and verse 1. Except the Lord builds they that labor, they labor in vain. Except the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen wicked but in vain. Except, except we, are, we receive the help of the Holy Spirit. Except God helps us through the Holy Spirit. Frustration is inevitable. In 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 9, he said, For by strength shall no man prevail. By strength shall no man prevail. In Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, it's not by power, nor by mind, but by my spirit, see as the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. The power of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit is what we need for a triumph, you know, a life of triumph. Therefore, the manifestation of the Spirit is for our profiting in life. The manifestation of the Spirit is for us to enjoy profiting in life. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 7, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit without. It's available. That provision is available. The Holy Spirit is available for all. For all, if you will allow him. If you will give him opportunity in your life, you cannot triumph in this polluted world without that power. In Daniel chapter 1 and verse 8, the Bible says, Daniel proposed in his heart that he will not defy himself with the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince, of the eunuch, that he might not defy himself. He proposed in his heart by the help of the Holy Spirit. He proposed in his heart. He could stand that temptation by the help of the Holy Spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. By the help of the Holy Spirit. And at the end of the day, everyone knew that he was serving the living God. Hallelujah. They came to bow to the God of Daniel. Hallelujah. Endowment of the Spirit, therefore, is ordained for our supernatural experience in life. The endowment of the Spirit of God in upon our life is to help us live a life that is above the natural. It's to help us obtain results that is not equivalent to the natural. It's to help us enjoy achievement in life that is beyond the natural. Endowment of the Holy Spirit. In other words, it makes us to live a life of exploit. That's what guarantees record-breaking achievements. That's what guarantees strange and unexplainable results. When the Holy, the power of the Holy Spirit is at work in your life, you don't get the same result like the natural man. No, because you have a backup. Praise the name of the Lord. You have a backup. There's what we call step up and step down transformers. All they do, when the light is low, that transformer will step it up. You know when your current is low, there are some things that will not work or work well. When your current is low, one, it can't carry your air conditioner. It will just be doing 
Or even the fan, it will just be blowing smoke. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. But when current is augmented, speed. Whoosh, praise the name of the Lord. That's what the Holy Ghost is. Stepping up every, you know, result in our life. Even though you are in the world, but you are not generating the result of the world. You are re generating result above them by the power of the Holy Spirit. Doors that will not open to them, it opens to you on its own accord. Positions that they say nobody has ever occupied in your place of work, you'll be the first. The kind of testimony that nobody has ever shared in your family, it's beginning from you. That is what the Holy Ghost does. That's what the endowment of the Spirit is. It makes us have supernatural experience. God's kind of result. Isaiah chapter 61. If you read from verse 1 to 7, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the naked. He has sent me to bind the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the law, the day of the vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn in Zion, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the law, that it might be glorified. They shall build up the old waste, they shall rise up, Former desolation, they shall repair the waste cities. Strange kinds of testimony. Strangers shall stand and feed their flocks, and all and all that. And then verse 7 say, For your shame you shall have double, and for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. When the Spirit of God is upon you, everything will be minimum, double of the natural results. Hallelujah. Helps us to enjoy supernatural experiences. Hallelujah. When the spirit is poured forth, the blessings must follow. In Isaiah chapter 44 and verses 3 to 4. And I will pour water upon them that is thirsty. Flood upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thy offspring. When the spirit is poured, the blessing must flow. When the spirit of God is at work in your life, blessings must flow in every direction. Blessings must flow. Doors open. Breakthroughs. Strange breakthrough. Two leaf gates. You are breaking forth on every side. Why? Because the Spirit of God is upon you. That's what endowment of the Spirit does. Isaiah chapter 45. You just see you are breaking forth to the left. You are breaking forth to the left, right? Isaiah chapter 45 and verses 1 to 3. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces. I will break in pieces the gate of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. Verse 3, I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, will call thee by thy name. I'm the God of Israel. Impossible doors open. Hallelujah. Impossible doors open. What has never been known to happen just begin to happen positively in your life. Why? By the oppression of the power of of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. That shall be your portion this month. I didn't hear your loud amen. How does the Holy Spirit enhance a triumphant life? How does the Holy Spirit enhance a triumphant life? Number one, the Holy Ghost is a custodian of God's plans and purpose for believers. The Holy Ghost is the custodian of God's plan and purpose for believers when you hear the Holy Ghost it's the same as the Holy Spirit so it can be used interchangeably hallelujah the Holy Ghost is the custodian of God's plans and purpose for believers in John chapter 16 and verses 13 and 14 how be it when the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear from his father, that shall he speak, and he shall show you things to come. He shall show you things to come. He shall show you things to come. He shall glorify me, 
for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. So the Holy Ghost has the blueprint of God for the individual's life. And what it does is shows man so that man can end his life in glory. So that the beauty of God can be radiated in the man's life. He has the blueprint of our destiny. He has the blueprint of our destiny. He has the plan. Just like an architect who has the building plan in his hands. Any other person may come. He may not know how that building should look like. The architect will bring it out and say, no, this, is, this ought to be here. This is how this is the Holy Ghost have the blueprint of our destiny. The same way an architect will have the building plan, the drawings, certified drawings, approved drawings. The same way the Holy Ghost is the one holding the approved plan and purpose of God for our lives. So if you really want to know what God's plan and purpose is for your life, consult the Holy Ghost. Consult the Holy Ghost. In everything, in everything, in everything, no matter how fast you want to be, if you will not allow the Holy Ghost to show you, you will live a wasted life. You don't have the building plan. The architect has the building plan. He is not yet there. You call him, he says, he's coming. You say, no, 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 we can't wait for him. Let's start digging. Just start digging. Just dig, dig. He put block here, do this thing. At the end of the day, when he comes, you may remove everything again. You may remove everything again. That's how it is. The Holy Ghost has the blueprint of God for our life and destiny. We must consult him all the time. In Habakkuk chapter 2 and verses 1 to 3, I will stand upon my watch and set me up upon the top tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I'm reproved. And the Lord answered and said, write the vision. Make it plain upon tables that, that he may run that readed it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time at the end. He shall speak and not lie. So whenever you want to take a step in life, you wait on God for the Holy Ghost to show you. Holy Ghost, is this in God's plan for my life? Is this in God's plan for my life? This step I want to take. Does it agree with what is in your hand there? Eh? I want to get married to this man. Holy Ghost, what is your plan written there? What is the plan of God that is in your hand written there? Am I on track? Am I on track? Oh, I want to resign this my job. Holy Ghost, is it time by your, the plan in your hand? Is it time? Am I running already late? So when you live your life, always consulting with the Holy Ghost, at the end of the day, there is no how you will not live a triumphant life. You will be breaking forth on every side. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. God has a plan for your life. Even before you were born. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5. He said, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee before thou came out of the womb. I sanctify you and ordain you a prophet unto the nations. I know I have a plan. I have a plan. Before you were born, Paul also said the same thing in Galatians chapter 1 and verses 15 and 16. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, while he was in his mother's womb, God has already separated him. The Holy Ghost just revealed it to him at that time. To reveal his son in me. That I might preach him among the hidden. Immediately I confirm not with flesh and blood. Can you see? The moment the Holy Ghost revealed that to Paul. Opened the eyes of Paul. And Paul had an encounter with the Holy Ghost. And he got that information. He stepped out. And see how glorious his life became. Praise the name of the Lord. The plan of God for your life is a plan of good. It's a plan of greatness and distinction. In Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11. I know the thoughts that I think to us you. See as the Lord. They are thought of good. Peace. 
not evil, to give you an expected end. But you must discover it. It's a glorious plan. In Romans chapter, chapter 8 and verse 30, moreover, who he did predestinate, them he also called. Whom he called, them he also justified. And who he justified, he also glorified. So God's plan for your life is a plan of glory, not shame, not reproach. No. In Psalm 16 and verse 6, the lines are falling unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. You have a goodly heritage. You can't afford to miss it. You can't afford to end up in shame. But the discovery of this great plan of God for your life is crucial for the fulfillment of our destiny. And that is one of the principal assignments of the Holy Ghost to show us. Just like we saw in John chapter 16, verses 13 to 14. He interprets to us. He shows us. He shows us. John chapter 16, verses 13 and 14. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and verses 9 and 10, he said, Eyes has not seen, ears have not heard, neither has he entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Great plans. But how do you get that plan? For God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searched all things, yea, the deep things of God. He searches it and reveals it to man. Hallelujah. So the Holy Ghost helps man discover himself. And the divine task and function and your divine assignment on us. Your shining is in your place. Your beauty is in your place. Your glory is in your place. Hallelujah. Your relevance is in your place. Until you discover that place, you just keep living a struggling life. And that's what the Holy Ghost does. When you are in your place, you will be celebrated. When you are in your place, people will look for you. Praise the name of the Lord. Stop running in another man's lane. Locate your lane. That's where your beauty is. Hallelujah. And that's what the Holy Ghost helps us to do. He helps us to know who you are. He helps you to know what you have. He helps you to know what you are sent to do on this earth. He helps you to know what you can do and then how you can do it. So we need the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost is the custodian of God's plan and purpose for man. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. How does the Holy Ghost enhance his triumphant living? Number two, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of the fear of the Lord. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of the fear of the Lord. In Isaiah chapter 11 and verses 1 to 3, and there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. And a branch shall grow out of his root, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom, understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge, and of the fear of the Lord, and of the fear of the Lord, the spirit of the fear of the Lord. So the Holy Spirit is the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Beloved, there is no way you can live a life pleasing to God without the spirit of the fear of God at work in you. There is no way we can please God. There is no way we can survive in this polluted world and generation without the spirit of the fear of the Lord. The spirit of the fear of the Lord. Hallelujah. That's what keeps you and I floating above the pollution of the devil. It helps us to maintain our relationship with God. It helps us to overcome or stay away from anything that has the propensity to disconnect us from God. The spirit of the fear of God. The spirit of the fear of God. We are living in a generation where sin looks cheap. That's why somebody who cannot give you money to eat. He can carry you to be a beer parlor and say they should give you two bottles. Tell him to give you the money. It's difficult. Praise the name of the Lord. 
Sin is everywhere cheap. 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 Looking for destiny to crumble. All that can make any one of us sail above the wickedness of the devil in sinking man's destiny is the fear of God. The fear of God. What is the fear of God, therefore? Number one is living upright, standing right. Standing right. Living right or standing right. Standing right. That's the fear of God. Standing right. That is no matter who is doing it wrongly. To stand right. What is the fear of God? To hate evil. To hate evil. Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy. And the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. The fear of God is to hate evil. To hate evil. To hate evil. So the test of knowing whether you have the fear of God is your response, your reaction, your response to evil. Your response to evil gives you an idea of the degree of the fear of God that is at work in your life. When you see evil, how do you react? Do you treat it with levity? You say, ah, after all, leave them. You know, we're, we're in a modern generation. No problem. People who treat evil with levity has propensity to do it. Praise the name of the Lord. The fear of God hates evil. If you love God, you will hate evil. If you love your wife, if you truly love your wife, if you truly love your wife and before your face, somebody comes and push your wife, how will you react? If the man looks at that person and says, what is it? I beg it's okay now. But if you truly love your wife, you won't know how you will jump there. Praise the name of the Lord. You, won't, you, you don't have to think. It, it will be a reflex action. It's not something you plan and you say, let me think how I will react. You don't think it if you truly love. Praise the name of the Lord. That day they will know you are not a gentleman. That's to show what is inside. The same way, if you love God, you will hate evil. You will hate evil. You will hate evil. Praise the name of the Lord. You will hate evil. The fear of God is to hate evil. Hallelujah. You are not doing it, and you will not allow people to do it. Hallelujah. It takes the fear of God to escape the pollution of this generation. Joseph walked in the fear of God. That was why he could triumph over that temptation. In, Isaiah, in Genesis chapter 42 and verse 18, I fear God. Joseph said unto them, This do and live, for I fear God. I fear God. If not, what an express, you know, opportunity. You are a young man. You are a slave. You don't even know after that place where you end. So in the worldly system, they will say, you better take, you better take advantage of the opportunity now. Opportunity does not come always like this. You are not the one who is pursuing after your master's wife. You are not the one. She's the one pursuing after you. Maybe he even said no. I'm sure he must have said no initially. No. Until the woman, no, 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 madam, please, no. No. He resisted. And the woman kept pressurizing him. Maybe it were the youth of this generation they will tell you, after all, I tried. Even God knows here I tried. I tried, Nabi, I no try. Ross, I no try. I said, no, 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 no. She, she, she said, you go put me for prison. Praise the name of the Lord. They will, they will justify themselves. He had every natural reason in court to have fallen into that temptation. But he said, I fear God. Not my, even my master. I fear God. The repercussion is not just for my master. 
My master can put me in the prison, but I fear the one that will put me in everlasting prison. I fear God. I fear God. So, the fear of God keeps you focused on God all the time. You are not thinking of what man will do to you. You are thinking of what God will do to please God. To please God. To please God. The fear of God takes you much more than thinking about the natural consequences, but thinking about the wrath of God over anything. I fear God. For you to walk in the fear of God, you must be endued with the spirit of the fear of God. Anything that will disconnect you from God, may you never be involved in it. Anyone that you will meet and you will miss God, may you never meet that person. I'm praying this prayer for you. Can I hear louder? Amen. Amen. Any step that you will take that will blot out your name from the book of life, may you never be engaged with it. Anything that will do that will get God angry over your life, may you never be involved with it. The fear of the Lord. Hallelujah. What are the benefits of the fear of God? You have access to the secret of God. Psalm 25 and verse 14. Hallelujah. The secret of God is unto them that fear him. He will show them his governor. The secret of God is what makes high flyers in life. You just keep flying. You have power of God. The anointing increases over your life. Psalm 45 verse 6 to 8. The fear of God brings you into favor gives you favor. Favor. Psalm 5 and verse 12. Thou shalt bless the righteous, those who walk in your fear. And with favor will you come from past them like a shield. You walk in God's favor. Favor everywhere. When you wear the fear of God, you see some people think that when you don't indulge in sin, when you don't indulge in evil, you are, you are, you are a Jew guy. Man, you are not smart. No. Hey. Shortcut. End of cutting short people's destiny. There is a way that cement right onto a man, but the end thereof is a way of destruction. God can never be late. Praise the name of the Lord. Righteousness may make you look like st- slow, but you are steady. Praise the name of the Lord. You are steady. You are steady. You enjoy favor on every side. You, you enjoy God's presence. My father will never leave me. Why? Because I do the things always that please him. John 8 and verse 29. You enjoy God's presence. You enjoy supernatural wisdom. The fear of the Lord is what? Is the beginning of wisdom. Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 10. The beginning of wisdom. Sin corrupts people's mentality. That's why you see some people who indulge in all manners of sin. Some, they just behave foolishly sometimes. They will be asking, are you sure it's okay? That's what sin It erodes people's mental dignity. And make them take some stupid and foolish steps. That ends up their destiny. Praise the name of the Lord. The fear of God. I decree this day a baptism of that spirit upon you from today in the name of Jesus. How does the Holy Ghost enhance a triumphant life? Number three, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of revelation. It's the spirit of revelation. It's a spirit of revelation. Ephesians chapter 1. And verses 17 to 18, he said, The God of our Lord Jesus Christ, as Paul's prayer to the Philippian ch- uh, Ephesians church, I pray that our God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. The eyes of your understanding be enlightened. That's revelation. That's revelation. Revelation is the unfolding of hidden secrets of God to man. Which makes you a high flyer. When light comes, your flight is guaranteed in life. Hallelujah. Revelation is the unfolding of the things the natural man can see. God giving it to you so that you can go ahead. What are the effects of revelation? Distinction. Distinction. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1. Arise and shine. For your light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Arise. Shine. 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 To shine means distinction. 
to shine. Somebody shared the testimony. His uh, word came out as the best in the entire class. That's shining. Praise the name of the Lord. Distinction. And it is what God shows you that turns you to a show to your world. What God reveals to you is what reveals you to your world. So when God shows you light, your shining is guaranteed. And that's what the Holy Ghost does. It gives you light so that you can be distinguished in whatever area of life that you are in. Revelation brings about unprecedented liftings. Revel when revelation comes, your promotions become certain. Hallelujah. In Galatians chapter 2 and verse 2, Paul said, Galatians chapter 2 and verse 2, I went up by revelation. I went up by revelation. Revelation takes people up. Light takes people up. This month, everything concerning you must change upward in the name of Jesus. So I'd like you to give the Holy Spirit opportunity in your life. Don't use this holiday period anyhow. Don't use it for just junketing around. Sit down with the world for light because your position must change this coming year. Hallelujah. Sit down. Take relevant books in areas of your need and ask for light. Because when light comes, liftings are granted. Praise the name of the Lord. Revelation is what guarantees your height. Hallelujah. Liftings. You, are, you know, your flight. Revelation guarantees your flight. In Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 8, who are these that fly? Who are these that fly as a cloud? When revelation comes, you begin to fly. You leave your contemporaries. You are on a flight. You are not struggling, but yet you are excelling in no small measure. Praise the name of the Lord. Revelation guarantees divine speed. When revelation comes, what you cannot achieve in five years, it is achieved in five months. Hallelujah. That's what Revelation does. It guarantees speed. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 22. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 22. He says, a little shall become a thousand. And a small one, a strong nation, I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. I will hasten it in his time. Revelation guarantees speed. When light came in verse 1, then you see speed is guaranteed. In Jeremiah chapter 1, and verses 11 to 12. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verses 11 to 12. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me and said, Jeremiah, what yes thou? And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree revelation. And then the Lord said unto me, Thou hast well seen. I will hasten my word to perform it. When you see, you enjoy speed. It is natural that you travel faster in the day than in the night. Because you can see well and you can see far. No matter how bright your headlamp is, it can still be compared to the illumination of the day. Hallelujah. When you see well, you will go faster. I decree every stagnation in your destiny is caused in the name of Jesus. As the Holy Ghost begins to open your eyes this month, you will go faster. In your business, you are going faster. In your career, you are going faster. That family is moving higher in the name of Jesus. Can I hear louder? Amen. How does the Holy Spirit enhance a triumphant life? Number four, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of obedience. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of obedience. Our blessing in redemption is guaranteed but access through obedience. Our blessings are already packaged. They are there. They are for us. But we take access of them through obedience. Deuteronomy chapter 28, if you read from verse 1 to verse 13. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verses 1 to 13. If thou wilt diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God to observe and to do all his commandments which I commanded this day, that the Lord your God will set you on high above all these nations and all these blessings. 
All these blessings. They are available, but they are takeable only through our obedience. They are takeable through our obedience. They are assessed and takeable through our obedience. In Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 19, Isaiah 1 19, if thou be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. The good is there. But you can only eat it through your obedience. The major problem believers have is obedience. We know the promises. We can quote it. We have written all of it. We can chant it. But obey the instruction. That's where the problem is. Obedience. Obedience. That's why we need the spirit of obedience. And that's what the Holy Ghost does. The Holy Ghost is the spirit of obedience. Is the spirit of obedience. Is the spirit of obedience to help us to enjoy obeying the instructions of God so that we can take his blessings. The spirit of obedience. We need it. In Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 27. And I will put my spirit within you. And I will cause you to walk in my status. Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 27. And you shall keep my judgment and do them. I will, you know, pour my spirit within you. And I will cause you to walk in my status. And to keep my judgment and do it. The spirit to do it. So that you will take the blessing. Is what we're talking about. That's one cardinal function of the Holy Spirit. He's the spirit of obedience. He helps us to, to do the will of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Helps us to do the will of God. Why do we need this spirit of obedience? Because, number one, some of the instructions that God gives us, they are beyond our natural capacity. They are beyond our natural capacity. You, you, you can't phantom it with your head. So, you can't even understand and to even accept it first is a problem. Then to go ahead to obey. For instance, in Genesis chapter 12, God just came at that age. God told Abraham, leave your father's house to the land which I will show you. At that age, it's like a man leaving certainty for uncertainty. If I die, or at least they will say I die, somebody will be here to bury me. But to live at 75, I have nothing. At 75, I have, you know, no place to say. And this place I'm managing. You see, I should leave. To where I don't know anybody. Okay, where are you taking me to? God didn't tell him. He said, just leave first. So to obey that kind of instruction, the human mind has no capacity to obey. That's why you need the Spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. We need so because such instructions are be, some instructions are beyond our natural capacity. Why do we need the spirit of obedience? Because number two, some instructions are costly. They are very costly. They are very costly. Praise the name of the Lord. Look at the one God gave Abraham in Genesis chapter twenty-two. Carry your son, the bond you have waited for. Even after God promised him at seventy-five. He needed to wait another 25 years. And finally, you had that son. And if it were you and my, me, you know the way you handle that kind of child. You know. Nothing must even breeze. Praise the name of the Lord. And then God said, go and sacrifice the child. Your son, I need him to sacrifice. It's too costly. We, can't, we don't have that ability to obey something. That's why we need the spirit of obedience. The spirit of obedience. Hallelujah. Why do we need the spirit? Because some of the instructions are deadly to be complied with. God told Abraham, sacrifice every male child at that age, including yourself. You want to do circumcision at that age? <laughs> when you see the knife alone, you can faint. You can faint. Sacrifice everybody and, I mean, circumcise everybody and not circumcise yourself. Parents who have made child and all that, who have passed through that, you know how painful is it to do for the child. Even at that small age, how much more of an elderly man. 
And to heal, you know what you have to pass through. Every little thing pinches the child and all that. The child will be crying and crying and crying. How much more an elderly person? It can be deadly. So some instruction God gives at times looks deadly, looks wicked. That's why we need the spirit of obedience. We need the spirit of obedience. Praise the name of the Lord. And sometimes God has spoken to you, sometimes on personal instructions that it took only you and God. Only you and God. You don't have any other job. That's the only job. And the Spirit of God is speaking to you. You don't have any other source of income. And the Spirit of God just suddenly spoke to you. Use your six-month salary for Shiloh sacrifice. <laughs> if you first of all hear, you say, you will pray above that voice. After you shout, and then when you are quiet, the Holy Spirit will now say, six months sacrifice. Praise the name of the Lord. So some kinds of instruction requires the spirit of obedience. Where every natural sense is blocked if you must obey God. That's why we need the spirit of obedience. We need that spirit... Number four, for prompt action. For prompt action. It's not just to obey. You know sometimes God speaks certain things to you. The devil wants you to wait first. To wait first. To wait. For instance, some people may have pledged some certain things now for Shiloh sacrifice. And then they have the money. They want to give the money. Something is saying, wait first. Why don't you upset this expenditure? Why don't you wait first? Why don't you wait to let them pay that money to be sure before you let go this one? A stitch in hand is what now in the bush. Wait. Wait first. Wait first. Wait. 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 And in most cases, it is that waiting period that now the devil uses. After some time, they say, ah, okay, let me, let me just wait. Maybe three months. And at the end of the day, it's gone. Praise the name of the Lord. We need that spirit of obedience for that prompt. The spirit of obedience for prompt response. For prompt response. For prompt response. And Abraham departed immediately. In Genesis chapter 12. And Paul, in Galatians chapter 1, he confirmed not with flesh. He took steps immediately. That's the spirit at work. Prompt action. Prompt action. Prompt action. Receive that spirit today in the name of Jesus. And it makes you to obey God unreservedly. No reservation. You are not keeping anything back. Total obedience. It helps you to obey God totally. It helps you to obey God totally from today. Every instruction you receive from heaven, I command a sweet response in the name of Jesus. I command a sweet response in the name of Jesus. And of course, you know the blessings of obedience, too numerous to say. When you obey God, you experience change of level. Abraham had change of level. Chapter 12, he was his quarter in his father's house. Chapter 13, verse 1, he became rich. Hallelujah. Chapter 24, verse 1, he had everything before he died. Hallelujah. You enjoy supernatural manifestation. John 14, 21. God just manifesting in diverse forms in your life. You enjoy God's presence. You enjoy breakthrough testimonies. Luke chapter 5, verses 1 to 7. At your word, I will cast down the net, even though I've labored so much. But at your word, I will cast down the net. Hallelujah. You enjoy supernatural supplies on every side. When the widow in 1 Kings chapter 17 obeyed, gave all that she had to the prophet, she entered into a realm of abundance. When that other widow in 2 Kings chapter 4 brought what he had, obeyed, abundance opened up. Hallelujah. Before this year is over, God will hit you with surprising finances in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Number five, how does the Holy Spirit enhance a triumphant living? The Holy Ghost empowers us to fulfill divine plan. He empowers us to fulfill divine plan. He not only shows us, but he empowers us. Zechariah 4.6 Not by power, not by might, but by your spirit, 
says, he is the Lord. Luke 24 and verse 49. Don't go anywhere. Tarry here until thou be endued with power from on high. And then when they obeyed, their destinies were fulfilled in grand style. Whatever plan and purpose that God has revealed to you, you will fulfill it in the name of Jesus. The devil will not stop God's purpose for your life. This month, as we engage in the power of the Holy Ghost, your destiny will open up. In the name of Jesus, I decree that the Holy Ghost will reveal God's plan for your life in the name of Jesus. I decree by the power of God, every kind of stagnation that you have experienced before, no more, in the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Ghost, you are enjoying speed in the name of Jesus. Whatever has been difficult for you to achieve in the last 11 months, by the power of the Holy Ghost, it shall be a walk over this month. In the name of Jesus, the spirit of obedience is coming upon you in a new way. In the name of Jesus, the step you need to take for your destiny to open, receive the grace to take it in the name of Jesus. Before this month is over, you will enjoy unprecedented breakthroughs. Open door on a strange order. In the name of Jesus. Every journey for this week is secured. The hand of God rests upon you. No accident is permitted. No evil is permitted. No death is permitted. No concern is permitted. It is a season of celebration and glory. No shame for you in the name of Jesus. Go in peace in the name of Jesus. Favor will pursue you this week. Blessing will locate you this week. The God of Bishop Enigma will answer for you this week. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us. All the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Is my year of breaking limit? Then what I have not seen or ears heard shall be your experience all through the year 2020. Congratulations.